sickness originates in the mind wow people die in this country more by taking medicine than by doing the natural way thank god i don't have a wife and children thank god it's a blessing and i'm single <laughs> Welcome back. Mary Mitchell here. Today's topic we're gonna go right now. Diseases that begins in the mind. Part number five. Part number five. And yes, actually is the last part of this chapter. And I'm thinking, yes, we're going to get there. To begin, without any second to spare, sickness originates in the mind. Wow! So you mean to tell me that before you get the sickness, I mean, um, let me, let me say it better way. Before you get the coronavirus, you already have it in the mind. Hmm, I wonder. Anyways, a great deal of the sickness which afflicts humanity has its origin in the mind and can only be cured by restoring the mind to health. Ooh. There are very many more than we imagine who are sick mentally. Heart sickness makes many dyspeptics for mental trouble has a paralyzing influence upon the digestive organs. Testament for the church. Volume 3, page 184. Okay, so, if you think about it, um, okay, let's move on. Christ heals you know what? No. Let me say that first. When you are sick mentally, there is nothing your body can do until your brain gets healed. If your brain is sick, then your whole body is sick. If your whole body is sick, you can train your brain to help your body fight that sickness. But once your brain is sick, there is nothing else you can do. Let's move on. Christ heals. There is a soul sickness no balm can reach, no medical heal or medicine heal, like the vaccine. Pray for these and bring them to Jesus Christ. Matthew 105. 1898. Now, I'm not saying not take the vaccine, okay? I'm trying to show you that don't think because you take medicine, it means you're going to get better. As a matter of fact, people die in this country more by taking medicine than by doing the natural way. Just a thought. If you if you think I'm lying, no, okay. But just a thought, okay. So let's continue. Atmosphere provides health and vigor. Above all things, 
parents should surround their children with an atmosphere of cheerfulness, courtesy, and love. I'm going to come back to that part. Yeah, that's very important. A home where love dwells and where it finds expression in looks, in words, in acts, is a place where angels delight to dwell. Parents, let the sunshine of love, cheer, and happy content enter your own hearts and let its sweet influence pervade the home. Manifest a kindly, forbearing spirit and encourage the same in your children, cultivating all those graces that will brighten the home life. The atmosphere thus created will be to the children what air and sunshine are to the vegetable world, vegetable world, promoting health and vigor of mind and body. Counsel to parents, teachers, and students. Page 115. Interesting. Now let's break it down. First. You know, when, when it comes to um, in the first sentence, when it comes to a home atmosphere, uh, how do I say that? Thank God I don't have a wife and children. Thank God. It's a blessing and I'm single. Now, I'm not saying it's a curse if you are married, but to me, it's a blessing that I am single. Okay? So, let's just, let's actually put it that way for the moment. One thing I notice is when you are married and have children, you tend to to bring work home. Yes. Parents tend to bring work home. And whatever happened at work is brought home. Why? Mostly it's the wife because she has to vent. And I can guarantee you, sometimes I'm with some of my friends and they are nurses. And, and I'm like, I don't even want to ask her how her day was. Because I already know I'm going to have to sit down and listen to her complaining about work for half an hour or an hour. I'm like, nope, I won't even ask her how her day was. Now, when she asks me how my day is, I'm like, yeah, it was good. Okay, she's like, you know, she's 40-something. So don't think I'm like, that's a girl my age. No, she's 40-something. So that's not the case at all. But that tells me, what would happen if I get married? Now, would I be able to bear with that for as long as I live? I don't know. Maybe yes. If God gives me a wife, then maybe he's going to give me the patience to, you know, listen to her complaining of the work I mean yeah so now would that be an atmosphere of cheerful and love uh, not cheerful but love yes because for, for her me listening to her would be like I care for her and she'll be happy but in return she'll have to give she'll have to give you something in return nothing is free so yeah it's a partnership I give you attention and they give me what I'm supposed to get. That's how it works. Okay. Second thing. Um, parent, let's the, let the sunshine of love, cheer, and happy content enter your own heart. And let its sweet influence pervade the home. That's what exactly I was talking about in the first sentence. Because what we do now is... What we what, what what actually happens now is when we leave the work with all the stress and and the, the emotions and the mood. If your day was really bad, anything that your child can would do basically would get you mad. And you, and you, even your even your husband. Even your husband, if he would usually call you by a certain name and he would want to be playful that day and say that to you, you would get mad or vice versa. 
But typically, it happens with the woman because they're all like emotional creatures and everything runs through their emotions. Now, us men, we don't think that way like that, but you might find some men that do that once in a while, but majority is to women. Um, so, that that's the that's basically the idea that we have to get. And it is actually compared to the atmosphere, last sentence, that last, last sentence, the atmosphere that we create in the home to the children, that atmosphere is like the sunshine that is to the world, the, to the vegetable world, promoting health and vigor of mind and body. What that means is, when you have that kind of happy, gay, cheerful uh, atmosphere, elated atmosphere, kind and love and the, the, the good vibe atmosphere in the home, it's as though you went outside and looked at the flower with this petal open, receiving the sun, which is a joy for the flower. Oh, not flower, but the, the vegetable world. That's how they grow, you know, to get better. So we as parents need to have that same mindset to give our children something good that would actually, in the, in the fact, in the fact, get them closer to us, parents. You know. But um, we don't get that often nowadays. We don't get much of that. Most parents are cold and because of work and complaining and all that. Things sometimes get out of hand a lot of times. So, now, I'm going to tell you guys that, um, that uh, this, this actually... Uh, I think it ends the chapter. Um, it does end the chapter, but I'm thinking as well it ends this series on the mind, character, and personality. Next, go. You're gonna find me. I might be making a video on education, or I might go back to the other one that I made earlier that I made before, which is called foundation of Christian education. Either one of them, I might go back to it and then you're gonna see me posting some more videos on that as well. And don't forget to of course like, subscribe on my Facebook on my YouTube channel, like, comment, follow on my Facebook, which I'm gonna put on the bottom. And so and on top you're gonna find some cards for the the playlist. A different playlist and all that. Anyways, guys, this was Mary Michelle. I hope to see you again. But you know what? If I don't see you again, I hope to see you when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then. Bye. For now. Mario out.